Welcome back to our program, Hollywood Structured. As some of you already know, our program is designed to help the young people who wish to enter the entertainment field. May it be music, nightclub work, theater, television, or film. It is also designed to help the parents and the educators of those young people to help them understand their wants, their needs, and the traps and the pitfalls that they may fall into unless thoroughly acquainted with the inner workings of Hollywood. Today, as our special guest, we have someone who, at the age of three, decided that all she wanted to do was to be in the theater. She took piano lesson, dancing lesson, ballet. Theater was all she was interested in. However, she came from another continent. And when she arrived in the United States, she could not speak English very well. Didn't stop her from acting, however. She co-starred with Jerry Lewis in Geisha Boy, she co-starred with Jack Lord and Mel Torme and myself in Walk Like a Dragon. She co-starred with Shirley MacLaine in To Love. And she co-starred with Ernie Kovac in uh, Wake Me When It's Over. No theater, no theater. However, 20 years later, things have changed. She is now the artistic director of the Asian American East West Players in Los Angeles. Her name is Nobu McCarthy. Hello, Nobu. Hi, Lillian. Good to see you again. <laughs> yes, <laughs> after so long. But before Nobu shares her experiences and her expertise with us, I would like to speak to you today about rejection. Rejection is rampant in Hollywood or New York. Let me explain to you. You have left home and you arrived in the big city, Hollywood, and you know that in order to work, you have to have an agent. So you had some pictures made at home. And you go to the Screen Actors Guild, which is the unit of the director, and they give you a list of the agents. And you mail. 50, let's say you make 100 pictures to different agents. No response. Not one person answers you. Rejection. Suddenly, a couple weeks later, one agent calls you in to see what you look like. You go in the office, you're a little bit nervous. They look at you and they say, oh, you're too tall, you're too thin, you're too heavy, you're too short. And we already have a couple of types just like you in our agency. Rejection. However, you show them your pictures because you think maybe the pictures will sell you. Look at the pictures and they say, it's too light, it's too dark, it's too retouched, it doesn't look like you. You need to have other shot. Rejection. You show them your resume because you think it's very good. They look at the resume and they say, all your credits are in theater and in school. That doesn't count here, really. And you are not with the union? Well, then we can't represent you because the people in the studio will not see anyone who is not with the union. Rejection. You do it again. You get some more names. You send some more pictures. And finally, an agent said, OK, I will try to work with you. They send you to an audition. A little bit nervous, but you feel excited, you read well, and the casting director said, that was fine. And you think, ah, maybe I got it. You never hear from them again. Rejection. Because you see, the casting director doesn't call your agent to tell you the agent that you didn't get it. They only call the agent if you got the job. Okay, let's say that the agent is patient with you and said, okay, I'll work with you for three months. I won't sign you, but I work with you for three months. And during those three months, you go to 10, 20 auditions, and you don't even get a call back. So the agent says, you know, uh, I've been trying to send you out. I'm working overtime for you, and nothing is happening. So I guess I'll give you one more chance, and if it doesn't work, then I have to drop you. Oh, pants, rejection. You get another audition, lo and behold, you get it. It's 
a small role, but you get it. You're excited. It was wonderful filming. You, you feel like you're part of the Hollywood scene by now. And the uh, company that made the movie send you a postcard telling you when the show is going to be on. So you tell all your friends. You call your family. You say, Mommy, watch me from there. Of course, you drop 50 postcards in the mail to the casting director saying, watch me on such and such a show at such and such an hour. The show comes on. And for whatever reason, the show may have been too long. You're practically all cut out of the picture. I mean, you're just a blur on the screen. Rejection. Now, rejection can also come from too much acceptance. Let's say, for example, that the agent, the casting director, or producer, or writer likes you, and likes you enough to ask you to go out to dinner. OK? That happens. What do you do? Now, you try to think it over because you think, well, if I accept, you know, I'm going to really ruin my principles. I really don't want to do that. On the other hand, you think to yourself, if I don't accept, maybe I miss the opportunity of meeting those people, getting close, and maybe getting a role. What to do? Because if you reject them, Maybe they are going to reject you. This is a tough decision for you to make. However, from my talk today, you probably think, oh, she's really trying to discourage us. I am not. I'm all for you. And I will tell you that all the actors that you see working on a stage, in nightclub, in television, or in film, all the actors and actresses that you see receiving Grammy Awards, Tony Awards, Emmy Awards, and Oscars have all experienced the rejection that I spoke of today, and many more. So, lesson for today, hang in there, and maybe you too will make it. Okay? Let's go back to my guest, Nobu, and ask her if she has experienced many rejections. Nobu, where were you born? I was born in Canada and raised in Japan, of course. And so when I came to this country, I didn't speak any English. No, no. But I want to go back. You're going too fast for me. All right. I want to go to Japan. And how did you decide that you wanted to be in the theater at the age of three? Well, age of three, my mother took me to um, this Takarazuka, which is like all women's uh, 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 theater company. And, it's uh, the opposite to Kabuki, the right? opposite to Kabuki, is exactly, and a more contemporary one. Mm -hmm. And I, w I saw it, and then I somehow thought that I belonged there. I thought <laughs> immediately thought I was one of them, and from that day on, I thought that I belonged to the theater, and that's how my career began, really. But you, your father was a diplomat, right? Yes. Um, did they allow you to study theater? There you were, a very nice little Japanese girl. Yes. I mean, that wasn't done, was it? Oh, it was, it was, really, it was very difficult. Usually my family especially has tradition. If, as a Atsumi family, it goes way, way yes. back. And so the, the profession of entertainment field is really a, below the, uh, Level of the level family. of my family, and um, in fact, it, my parents really d rejected me to have such a desire first. But so what did you do? You did well, something naughty, didn't you? I, I, <laughs> told I you know. What. <laughs> I told you what. Uh, well, I took my family crest, which is a stamp, yeah. and I signed up to. Um, singing group, rec recording company, and the day the audition came, I told my mother that I had to go to this place, and my mother practically had a heart failure, and, but she came with me, and then again, she, wanted, she told me later on that she wanted to dig a hole and hide, because there was a, about 300 
kids there and then they all sang individually and they're all trained singers and I wasn't I just belt out whatever the song and I couldn't even sing I mean I couldn't even finish the song because I didn't know what I was I practically I was making up and uh, somehow they picked me in one of 15 out of 300 I think by sheer guts <laughs> right right exactly <laughs> Exactly. Uh, the teacher said that if anybody who has so much guts like her, she is bound to succeed. So I began my singing career as a child. So you sang in a group? In a or group. You, or in recordings? Uh, we made records. We were on uh, radio. Uh, those were live shows then on radio. And every week for Children's Hour, and we used to entertain soldiers then. And meanwhile, again, I sold my family crest stamp and signed up for the uh, dancing, modern dancing group. And uh, I passed again. <laughs> it was the sheer guts, I guess. And um, I, I somehow saw that I saw myself on the stage and three years old that I have to sing, I have to dance, and I didn't know anything about acting, but those other things are very, very obvious thing, and then also I was aware that I have to wear a pretty dress. Mm -hmm. And so I started to get very, I was very, very passion conscious as a child, mm -hmm. and uh, so my childhood was really um, consist of Monday through Saturday, Every day I took lessons, every day. And then I really didn't have much of playing time, which was okay for me, because that was my pleasure. That was, that was your playing time there. <laughs> that was there. my playing time. Okay, so now you come to the United States yes. and you like movies and you want to work as an extra, right? Because I couldn't speak any English, so and then also, I was deathly afraid of camera. I thought the no big eyes are staring at me. I can't do anything in front of that. So I wanted to see movie, uh, movie stars and movie studios. Mm -hmm. I was so curious about Hollywood. So I wanted to be uh, background people. Yes. And when my agent said he wants to handle me, I said, no, 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 I don't want to be an actress. I just wanted to be a background people. And he said, why? I said, because I, can't, I, couldn't speak, I can't speak English, and then I'm afraid of camera, and I'm, I was afraid to take responsibility. And so he said, okay. So that's how I got into film. Now, what happened with Jerry Lewis? Your agent sent you for something. Uh, sent me for, well... At the time, uh, Jerry Lewis was planning to make, uh, ready to make Geisha Boy, and they were looking for a leading, ma uh, leading lady, a Japanese girl. And they are looking for all over the, the nation, and also in Japan, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. In those days, Hawaii was Hawaii then. Um, they couldn't find anybody, apparently, and I was also uh, called to audition. And my Asian told me to wear kimono. So I thought, okay, I'm going to wear a kimono. I never wore a kimono uh, in Japan, mm -hmm. but I wore, and it was very uncomfortable, but I did, and I thought I looked beautiful. I went over to see Jerry Lewis, Frank Cashman, who was the uh, director and writer, mm -hmm. and, uh, and then a whole lot of people. I don't, and then I had a great time, and they were so kind. They were so kind, and they said, thank you so much. I will call you. So I thought, oh, good. And I went home, and I waited. I didn't go anywhere. I stayed home and waiting for them to call me. And they never called me. That's what I was talking about earlier. Right. right. And those days, I was so naive that I didn't know that was a way of rejecting me. And um, about a couple of months later, two weeks or so, I waited around the house. Mm -hmm. And... Um, then I told my agent that the, the strange, they promised me they would call me. They never called me. I said, well, that's n lesson number one. If that means in very polite way, no thank you. 
So I thought, aha, uh -huh. and that's how my career started. Yes, but you must explain what happened because this is very significant for the young people who are listening. You then presented yourself two weeks later dressed in Western clothes. In Western clothes. Right. To Jerry Lewis. And what happened? Well, what happened was that they were still searching of a leading uh, lady. Uh, lady. And, but then, time being, they were also looking for extras. And I thought, ah, that's me. That's me, extra. And so they also asked me to wear a kimono. And I thought, oh, I don't want to go through this pain again wearing, uh -huh. you know, uncomfortable clothes. So I wore just Western clothes, be myself. Uh -huh. And this is easy for me because it's just going to be a background, <laughs> you know. So I went there, and I was just walking into the uh, uh, Paramount studio, courtyard, remember? Mm -hmm. And when I was walking, so happened that Frank Tashrin opened the window and saw me walking by and said, that's the girl we want. That's the girl we were looking for all over the country. And the same course, people who did not call you after the audition exactly. picked you just like that. I was number 17. That's the way it goes, gang. That's the way it happens. All right. So now you start doing that picture, mm -hmm. and you also start learning English. Right? Yes. And uh, then you did four or five other pictures. Mm -hmm. you, did, you have done a lot of television. Yes. Also. Um, you are actually learning on the job. Yes. I didn't speak any English. First, first of all, that Jerry Lewis movie, I didn't know what the heck I was saying, really, because they gave me a coach, and they taught me how to speak, how to say the dialogue, and I just learned. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jerry Lewis, of course, being a comedian, he changed the cue lines, mm -hmm. and then I was completely lost, and it was funny to him and funny to everybody, I guess. And it wasn't so funny to me, <laughs> but... Uh, that's how I learned, through scripts and talking to cameramen and ga uh, gaffers and you know, people around me. And they were very, very kind. Really, they were such a kind friends that mm -hmm. I, you know, I met through my career. But that's how I learned my English. Okay. Now, there are also, especially since you're a foreign actress, as I am, they are dry spells, mm -hmm. which are very difficult. What do you do during those times? Well, um, to tell you the truth, when I, since I started to do this movie, I was constantly busy till uh, late 60. And somehow, late 60 came, it just, Asian theme just dropped industry. I think they threw the vogue of certain mm -hmm. themes mm -hmm. from time to time. And uh, they changed into black theme. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, the Asian uh, characters uh, uh, no, uh, are nowhere n near seen on s films, you know. So then I was completely out of work all, all of a sudden. And what do I do? And I thought that it's most important things for me is my love, is my work. Mm -hmm. So I was continue to take my classes as an actress. Mm -hmm. And uh, I went back to voice. And uh, uh, I didn't go through piano, never again. I wasn't very <laughs> good at it. But, um, and then I turned to theater, finally. The thing was that I was so, once I got into film, I was very afraid to get on the stage. Now I started to realize what acting means. So it took me a great deal of co courage for me to get on the stage. But I did it during the dry spell. So you finally got your wish. You went on yes. the stage. Did you like it as much as you thought you would? Or yes. did you prefer a film? You know, I love, in, I love both in different ways. Very, very different media, don't you think? Yes. I love theater in very, very different ways. I love film and results that you'll see on screen, and it doesn't go away like stage. But stage, you get 
immediate satisfaction and also different crafts that involve in it is so challenging. So I love, I love really actually both. Yeah, something also happened. Not only did you do stage, but you became the artistic director of the theater. Yes. What does it consist of? What do you do there exactly? Um, I do plan for the seasons, play for the theater. How many plays do you do a year? Uh, we were doing four. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, from next season on, I'm planning to do five, uh, including children's theater. And my main goal is to, to nurture youth, youth for the uh, uh, mid-generation after mm -hmm. me and mm -hmm. after me. So um, I'm, I'm really into um, having a classes, institution, writers, directors, uh, acting, uh, musical, uh, voices in other words, dancing, all those things. At uh, the theater itself? At the theater. It's complete. Yes. Now, is it mainly for Asian, or do you take other people to? Oh, of course, we take everybody. But we, since we started, the base is started with Asian American, mm -hmm. because we, Asian American has another problem uh, other than me being woman, yes. but Asian American is very specified, specific area that we can't just go in and expect to be hired as a, as a woman of certain age. Because mm -hmm. they'll say, well, but you don't have, you know, gray hair or you don't have blonde hair. We're looking for blonde hair. We don't have blonde mm -hmm. hair. So um, our job is more secluded and uh, it's, it's, it's more difficult to find. Also at the same time, if there is a material available, there will be easier for them to say who is available. Mm -hmm. And then say, ah, Nobu McCarthy, mm -hmm. then it's there. Mm -hmm. But overall, it's very, very hard to find jobs. Do you, excuse me, mm -hmm. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but, but I'm going to yeah, go ahead. you anyway. <laughs> Uh, do you choose the play? Do you choose the material yourself? Or yes. is it sent to you by writers? Well, the thing is that um, usually people sent me uh, throughout the years, mm -hmm. and we, we choose from that. But then also, um, we develop writers. Oh, that's wonderful. And uh, so we do have Writers Institute. In fact, uh, it's, we're going to start uh, this from this October, uh, we call it David Huang's mm -hmm. uh, Writers Institute. Uh, he just won the to uh, Tony Award yes. from uh, M Butterfly, and so we're trying to create new works all the time. But out of that, all the uh, collective uh, s scripts, I choose. How many hours do you spend? the institute oh, well <laughs> if if I you know allow myself I have I, I spend seven days a week from morning till night sometimes I come back to three o'clock in the morning poor husband yes <laughs> poor Bill do you want to mention because I'm sure that some of the people that are listening there might be interested in knowing where you are located you want to give an address oh, or a phone number of course yeah 4424 Santa Monica Boulevard, and which is um, uh, Silver Lake oh, area. Yes. And is there the a phone, phone number? is six six zero zero three six six. Say it again. Six six zero zero three six six. Okay. Now let me ask you something. Um, you also did a very important movie a couple of years ago. Farewell to Manzana. Yes. Uh, that was. To me, uh, maybe, that, maybe that's not what you're thinking of, but to me, Farewell to Manzana is one of the most important uh, films that I made. It's actually for the NBC uh, movie. Uh, it was a while ago, about 15 years ago, but still mm -hmm. I think it's one of the most important movies for America yes. because it's about inter uh, internment camp for, uh, for the Japanese, Japanese American during the, the Second World exactly. War. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nobu, you won't believe this, but this is your time to speak directly to the young people or to the parents. 
We're getting to this magic hour. Okay. Um, for young people who are uh, very, very much into this uh, show business or desire to be, just keep on burning that desire. It's so important to have this desire. That's, that's what makes you or break you. And uh, uh, on top of that, another important ingredient is discipline. Discipline in theater and films are most, most important things because if you have a desire and this uh, discipline, and that's two accomplished things. Another thing is never, never giving up. Don't give up. And see, even if you have a talent, if you're giving up in one or two films or one or two tryout and it doesn't work out, what good would that do, right? So don't ever give up. Um, also, it has to be uh, practical, I think. It has to be very practical to put it in your mind. The main thing is that you have to live in this life logically and happily. That's the most important thing. And so make sure that you're safe in living. You can't, just because you have a desire, you just took off and trying to do things without any plans. You must have plans for your life. Okay. And thank you. Uh, I would like to thank Nobu for sharing her experiences with us. I'll try my Japanese. Arigato. Doitashimashite. Thank you. <laughs> and remember, you people out there, please, keep watching us because we keep watching out for you. Thank you. Be well. Keep the faith. Till next time.